Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Feng Boqun. Uh, I'm going to today. I'm going to uh, present some idea I've been working on to improve uh, Loctite. So, for those who do, may not know that Loctite is a uh, in kernel dead uh, lock detector, so that it basically used to detect all the dead lock or the other lock issue in kernel, and uh, that's, that's actually something that teach how a kernel developer will pro program, will use how, how to use the lock. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so uh, let's begin with some uh, pinpoints of uh, LockDap. So first one is uh, everybody knows that LockDap has, uh, uh, that the warning of LockDap is not really human readable, although that uh, it did provide it, it does provide uh, all the information that need for a person to figure out uh, that what's going on there and uh, for the people to uh, really uh, know that know how the dialogue happens, but it's really not do a better job as printing. And uh, also, uh, see this is example of there there is um, uh, five logs involved in this uh, uh, log issue. And uh, uh, the one I didn't show is that it will also print every uh, stack trace of each log. But uh, notice that log type can only uh, record uh, one stack trace for each dependency. Uh, this is because we do the thing in kernel and uh, we don't have you no know, end list. Uh, we don't have a, a lot of memory to record all the call trace of each uh, log. So it's kind of a limitation and if you, it's kind of limited and if you have ever been uh, working on uh, analyzing size, uh, uh, one of the log depth warnings, you will know that it's really, once the, the numbers of log grows and it, it will really take people uh, a, a lot of time to kind of decoding that, what does that, that mean? And uh, yeah, that's uh, another part of this. Another uh, pinpoint of the lock type warning is that this is example. Uh, it's uh, it's the same uh, it's the same one as previous slide. So uh, in this uh, in this print, it seems that we only have three lock involved. And also in the possible locking scenario, it seems that we only uh, to to uh, reproduce the dead lock. We only need uh, to CPU, but this is not this is not true. Uh, we we print that because uh, it's we do the pretty printing in C and in, and in kernel. And uh, first we don't have a pretty print library in kernel. And I will assume that we will never have it in kernel. And the other thing is that uh, we also need to have a way to maintain the the space of the uh, uh, console logs. So you cannot do, so for, for this example, it's actually may get like uh, five CPU involved to reproduce this dead log, but we cannot do the printing uh, uh, to exactly the, the to, we cannot do the printing of the exact, uh, exact uh, logging uh, scenarios because, because of this limitation. So this all calls because we do the preprinting in kernel. No, thank you, you hear me? Okay. Being the author of the code that prints this out, <laughs> yeah. I took a shortcut to do it this way just because the screens at the time, but it, I'm like, okay, it was just make it a little bit nicer. Yeah. It can, and it should be updated. I just never had time to do it. Yeah, yeah. So don't say that this is a, uh, hindrance. It was a shortcut. I. It can be fixed. It can yeah. show you the full lock chain yeah. nicely. Yeah. Just takes time to do it. So th don't say that this is like a hindrance or anything. It was just me being lazy, and yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. If I get time, yeah. I'll fix it. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I, yeah, I certainly understand that. I'm not saying that. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying this is actually something wrong, but it's. But I think that one thing I should point out if. I kind of thought that the point of we actually print the full information in the uh, in the kernel because it will take a lot of time. 
uh, compared to this 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 color one, and it uh, um, we also uh, maybe uh, so I don't think we have infinite wide of the console log uh, maybe, and uh, some some somehow some uh, somehow we're, go, we're going to hit the limitation of the print k if we're doing that. Yeah, but I, I'm just saying that this. Uh, this is the current state of locked app, and uh, maybe we can do that if the whole thing is done in user space. Okay, so our, uh, another pain point of using locked app is that sometimes uh, people is working on XYZ, but uh, the locked app keep warning on a ABC, and uh, 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 there is one uh, behavior of locked app is that whenever locked app find a uh, issue, it will turn it off, and uh, so it will no longer def detect any dead logs, and uh, it also it will no longer uh, keep bookkeeping, um, you know, and the, uh, it, it will no longer bookkeeping that which task has ho ho hold, holding which log. So uh, I think that this is actually okay uh, for log type design, because, um, uh, if you have a lock issue appear and the system may be in, already in the wrong place and uh, you won't want to uh, continue to see, to see if there is any other issue because they won't get, in theory, won't get a, a more uh, accurate result. But uh, it would be better that if we can uh, somehow provide a way to the user that uh, I mean, uh, for example, like they only care about logs in networking and they don't want to block by some uh, lock issue in file system and the vice versa. So it may be good we can improve that. And uh, there is other, uh, in theory, uh, the pinpoint of locked app uh, is that uh, first uh, locked app itself has a, a lock and uh, it uses it to protect the uh, lock dependency graph. And uh, so that somehow create a synchronization point uh, because, uh, and because that there may be issues that um, uh, it, you can, you can reproduce in production, but you cannot reproduce with locked up on. And uh, so it's, it's better if we can, you know, kind of uh, uh, minimize the imp impact of the synchronization point. Also uh, debugging locked up itself is kind of, uh, challenging uh, because it's involved like graph searching and also all the printing there. And uh, honestly, I don't, I don't think that it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, I think it's okay to do that in kernel, but uh, I mean, it's, it should be done something. Uh, I mean, if, if it, it will be very easy if we do that in neural space, we get a lot of tools to use. So that would be better. And also if you want to change the behavior of block type and you can use, if you, if you can have that in neural space, uh, it will be very easy to, to, uh, to, to change. Okay. So uh, a little bit of introduction of what lock type does today. So it's basically a big thing. It has the uh, per task log stack, which track every task uh, for the log it's already holding or it's going to hold. And uh, if the log is holding interrupt context, it will use the interrupted task uh, stack to, to track that uh, log holding. And uh, whenever there is a dependency, dependency means that uh, a log is uh, grab after another log. Uh, so whenever there is a dependency, it will go to add a dependency, try to add a dependency to a uh, dependency graph. And uh, the dependency graph is, uh, is a, is a uh, the dependency graph has all the dependency that already happened in the system. And it will use the dead log detector to go through the uh, graph to find a certain, find whether a certain uh, uh, circle exists or not. And uh, also, uh, speak of which, I think also we, something we still, we, we also don't have for lock depth is that we actually don't have very clear rules of each that lock. 
So I try to I tried to add some notification in in, in the log app, uh, and I tried my best to add comments, but it's really hard uh, to describe like uh, the ground rules of all the deadlocks. So it's kind of uh, this thing is still missing missing some somehow in the log app implementation. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, let's go to next slide. So, what I'm going to do, uh, what I'm, uh, I have actually have some experiment with this. Uh, uh, I want to change the log types structure into this into this thing. Uh, it have, will have a front end, a back end, uh, also a mid middle layer. Is I call it pipeline, but I'm I'm all, always bad at naming, so uh, I may be wrong. So it's still that the front end pass dependency into the back end, and the back end can implement it. It still does the same work, but uh, it gives uh, some uh, flexibilities, and uh, we will see later. So, okay, so how do I? I think it's fine. So first, the lock type front end will uh, bookkeeping uh, as they is will bookkeeping all the log holding information, and uh, it will work even log that is off. Uh, this is the behavior change because we don't do that, but we can. Doing this is is quite simple. We can it just uh, uh, keep a per task uh, array, so that's easy, and uh, it's actually no log involved here. Uh, you don't need to log because you you don't access the. Uh, Dependency graph, and uh, so it's doing so. It will give you the answer that uh, you know, which logs the current th the current thread or which log a thread is, is is holding. So is that kind of useful because uh, so that we have a lot of uh, log type assert in the code, and uh, we uh, sorry, uh, we have uh, we have a lot of the uh, log that assert in our kernel code and uh, we uh, if if we uh, if we have the front end we can simply use it alone without the dialog checking but we we'll still be able to find a lot of bugs that miss some miss the uh, some some bug that caused by not holding a log and also uh, it will be it will run very fast uh, uh, compared to the, the, the full version of log that because you don't need to uh, hold a global log for the dependency graph. And the backend, uh, it has the, it still uh, maintain the dependency graph and uh, it's have the dead log detector and it also can do pretty print, uh, maybe. So that the whole thing is that the backend can be run in user space. Uh, uh, because uh, we will see that the reason later. Uh, so uh, it, 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 uh, we will see the reason later. Um, so it's basically the same function as we have uh, for Locktap today. So it will be no much change to it. And it just, uh, it, it's just the same as today's Locktap. Uh, it, 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 it will be just a cleanup and a refactor. Okay, uh, so also it can be able to implement it in your space and in maybe in another language. I have tried this in Rust, so I have a working Rust uh, log that back in that. Okay. Sorry, uh, we have a question for Peter Z um, online. Yeah, so if we do the whole log detection thing in user space, um, how does the method get out if your machine that logs? Uh, sorry, I missed, missed, your la uh, missed your last sentence. Uh, could you repeat again? Suppose you have an actual deadlock and you do the log detection in user space. Yes. I think you're screwed. Um, uh, yes, but... Um, but uh, most of the time, logdap only detect the, the the possibility of that log. So, uh, I, if you're I, lucky, I, let me, yeah. Let, let me just so people do understand what's going on. If the okay. lock 
if block depth actually detects, or if there's a real lock depth or lock deadlock. That, yeah. The deadlock could trigger before the backend gets to tell you it. So one of the features of, I've had several cases where the system locked up, but luckily locked up triggered, showed you the print, and then boom, you had the lockup. Yeah. So uh, if it's in the users, I think Peter's concern is if it's in the user space and that happens, you get a lot, the machine just locks up, yeah. but you have no report of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I understand that. Uh, but um, what, what, was, what I was trying to say is that with this front end back end design, you still have the old uh, behavior of lock depth. You still will have, you can, uh, you still can have the back type, sorry, the back end running in kernel. It won't change the old behavior. It just provide uh, a flexibility to run the back end in user space and have a delicate uh, front end so that it can uh, track all the uh, log holding information. So, so, um, so maybe I can rephrase what you're doing. So basically, if you're worried about lock locks. Mm -hmm. things locking up and locked up is, so basically the idea of this is if it's in user space, you could implement different um, functionalities so that in the case you have is you're testing your code, but you know, there's some other code that's triggering locked up splat yeah, for some yeah. various reasons. And sometimes it's something that's like, you know, RCU stuff is important, but there's very, very seldom does it actually trigger a true deadlock because yeah. it's such, the reason why we have locked up on it is because it's such a hard race to hit yeah. It's likely it's not going to be your problem, but there's there's cases like when I'm working on the RC1, RC2 kernel, yeah. that there's a locked up splat, and I'm like, oh darn it, I can't use locked up to debug my own code that I'm developing yeah. on right now, right. because this splat always triggers first, and I never get to test my code. So if it's in user space, even though the splat happens, it's not going to disable locked up, and yeah. I can still continue to test my own code. Right. Is that what you're proposing? Uh, yes, yes. So Peter, does that make sense? I'm worried. Um, I mean, the, the primary usage for LockDap is during kernel development, and we want people to use this all the time. Um, if you're moving a whole bunch of that functionality out to user space, people will not quite know which to use. Um, especially if the user space one grows more features and that just fragments things. Um, like Steve said, I've, I've hit that, that actual debt lock case quite a lot during my own development. Um, okay. That really is a valuable thing to, to get a locked up output before the machine locks up. Um, okay. So I'd, I'd really like to keep the whole thing in kernel space. Um, splitting it up as you do, um, that's fine. Um, right? I mean, writing the whole thing in a different language, perhaps. I mean, we'll possibly get that whole Rust thing in the kernel. Um, <laughs> okay. There's that. Um, So yeah, uh, refactoring how the whole dependency tracking thing is done, I, I don't mind too much, but keeping it all in kernel, I think is really important. Yeah. So uh, Peter, I just want to uh, understand what you're saying. So you're not, so you don't mind the rewrite or you don't mind the restructuring. You don't mind all this, as long as it stays in the kernel and the fact that it will trigger before the actual lock happens, a lockup happens. Correct. If it also exports data to user space and we get a pretty printer that prints prettier or more comprehensible output, I'm fine with that too. Um, but adding features that rely on user space uh, for, for critical things, that's just not okay. Okay, so, so uh, let's, let me see if I understand that correctly. So basically, uh, you want the, if, if we have this functionality in your space, you want the your space and the kernel share the same uh, data log detector, right? I mean, they, they could the, the, the basic core code would, should be the same. The kernel yeah. would have a simpler printer, just dump bare information. 
Yeah. Um, and user space could grow a real fancy one hmm. that holds the hand. Um, but I really think it's important to get um, all the information out if you had an actual deadlock. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Just wondering whether you could specify a kind of machine interface to dump the data or the intermediate data for consumption either by user space, by some K after a K exec, some other kernel that could run after the deadlock, or from within the kernel. Yeah, I mean that's a common thing to do. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, the. Uh, while I was working on this, I, I, uh, I actually um, you know, decided that I should keep the deadlocker, uh, so deadlock detector, uh, the same in the user space and uh, in the in the kernel. So it won't be like uh, more more functionality of the deadlock detector in the user space than the uh, kernel. That's the thing I try to keep keep the same. So. Uh, Okay, um, I, uh, maybe we can go on. Uh, I have a few slides uh, about something. Okay, so uh, the middle layer, uh, well, the middle layer can be, it just uh, uh, transfer the uh, dependency information from the front end to the uh, back end. It's, act, it's actually a, a abstraction, uh, but know that uh, it may be, uh, so it can have an optional uh, dependency graph also in the middle layer because we want to save the uh, dependency. So, so if we don't have the, the, ca the cache of dependency graph, then every new dependency, every dependency will be treated as a new dependency. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, it's, it won't, won't be necessary because uh, the, the dependency has already been seen by uh, lock type. So it may have, uh, uh, actual uh, depend another dependency graph, uh, but this is only exists if the uh, uh, the, um, the backend is running in user space or in other machine, and uh, it it can have multiple mode uh, for the pipeline. So maybe it, if we define the pipeline as just function call, uh, then it just behave like today. Uh, uh, it won't have any other. It, it probably uh, have better, you know, code uh, organized, but it's the, the behavior will be the same as today. And uh, I think that we actually want this because we want to have uh, today's lock type uh, in uh, at certain level of, as you already said, at certain level of uh, the development cycle. Because uh, that means that we 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 have the zero deadlock torrent uh, policy, so that is an important thing. And uh, so another thing I have, I have experienced is that I have experiment is that I can use it to uh, I basically just use a proc file to get the information to. Uh, to the user space so that the user space can run, can run the detector. So it's it's running and it's it's actually can do the uh, the dependency check. And also, uh, also another thing I'm try is that I uh, mm, uh, actually run the uh, that uh, lock depth uh, backend in another machine or in a host uh, that the information is dumped via the uh, Siri console. So these are the these two other use cases I think may be useful, especially for some CI CI people because they it may be give them more uh, flexibility to run their tests, and uh, it could uh, potentially maybe potentially detect more more uh, lucky issues uh, ahead of time. Okay. So yeah, that's basically. I'm going. Oh, I'm about to talk today, and uh, the future work is to uh, upstream, and uh, I think the front uh, and isolation is actually straightforward, and uh, it can be done uh, very quickly. And uh, but uh, I have been stuck at the configuration, so I need to make 
the configuration works that uh, we have multiple mode of the pipeline layer and we have multiple we, we are able to have multiple uh, backend so that's something I'm working on and also this the 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 thing I have to mention is that I'm not sure that if we are going to allow this to be in a user space or another machine that what will be the pro, uh, protocol of the pipeline so basically it's like a tracing uh, it just uh, uh, send to another uh, end deformation. So, but I'm now using a very uh, a stupid way. I just uh, put this structure into the uh, memory and uh, print it out. But uh, I think maybe that's something I can work on. Uh, I can uh, you know, see some uh, to see if any tracing format can really fit this uh, usage. And also uh, uh, whether we will have multiple backend in the kernel. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, I have a question. Um, the log that file itself is pretty big. Uh, I think maybe around several thousand, nine, maybe seven thousand, six or seven thousand. Right. So, uh, are you thinking about breaking up into smaller portion corresponding to different? Different uh, part of the like the front end and back end, yeah. so make the files smaller so that you can people when they look for information it's easier to look up than just one big giant file. Uh, you mean like? Uh, let me see if I. You mean uh, moving the? You mean like code code clear? Uh, yeah, just 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 depending on the the, the function you can. Put it into a different file so that um, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's that's, that's uh, yeah. Easier that's, to find the information instead. Of, right. Uh, in a in a big file. Right, right. That's that's certainly some, something I will do. Uh, for uh, for with this uh, effort. Uh, mm -hmm. in this effort, that's something. Yeah, because I I actually have have been thinking about whether we should just break up the log file into more a few smaller pieces. Yeah, to make it easier to yeah to understand or not. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's it's good thing to to do. Uh, even you no, know, even we don't choose the front and the back end. Even we don't allow to run it in user space. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's good yeah I, I I got yeah. I have this kind of problem. Sometimes it's hard to look for information, and also there's a lot of uh, conditional comparison. So there are different uh, conditional. Oh, sorry. And sometimes it's hard to figure out whether they are enabled or not, or whether right. you put the the function in the wrong place. Yeah. Uh, under some certain configuration, uh, it won't compile. Yeah. So I started this work because uh, you know issue like you said, and uh, also where I started, where, where I'm working on it, I, I figured that maybe we can do something fancy like putting the backend in user space. So that's, that's yeah, I understand that. But uh, while you are doing that, you should also think about how to yeah. uh, simplify that's, the log file. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question? Looks like no questions. Uh, I'm, so I'm not very familiar about what's being done in this backend. Uh, but I mean, I'm thinking maybe there are other use cases rather than moving that to user space. I mean, it could be move to after a key exec. It could be maybe move to after some uh, dump over network interface. Yeah. Things like that maybe could be done. So what additional things could be achieved if we can move optionally the analysis or this backend mm -hmm. uh, over there, uh, rather than just in the kernel at the moment where things are locking up? Um, hmm, I really. Uh... I, think, uh, I, I, I don't have any idea right now, uh, but the stretches is actually valuable. Uh, I think maybe, um, right, if we can do that, uh, as, as I said, after a K execute, that will be. Uh, 
as kind of uh, it, that, that means less work for us to like refactoring the whole thing and uh, still uh, keep something because you you got a, a, a brand new kernel to analyze that. So yeah, yeah that's that's maybe. Uh, but then um, I think the, the, the uh, I do, uh, so one information I'm not really sure about is that I don't know how the CI people will run this, uh, whether they, they will benefit, whether we do the KXQ thing will benefit them. So that thing, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe they just like to take a lot of log and have their script to analyze them. Maybe that's, that, that's what they want. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one thing to look at the technology, what, how can we move things around to make it mm -hmm. different? But I mean, it's important to ask ourselves, what are the additional use cases that it mm -hmm. could enable? And it's not clear to me. I don't, I don't know what's the information content well enough and what the current backend does with it and what it cannot do because it's limited in its execution. Yeah, one thing if you do the K exit way is that uh, you don't need to have a way to figure out a way to pass all the stack trace into the backend. That's, that's a lot of effort for everything. Uh, Maybe, maybe so. so uh, I'm also worried if I run a backend in the space that the the transaction of the, the the transaction of the information of the back the stack trace will take a lot of time to process and uh, for for the kernel. So it will, uh, you know, uh, uh, run, uh, take a lot of CPU times and uh, still run and then make that lock type run even slower without. Compared to our, the current situation. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, by kind of serializing the data that you need. Right, right, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, I yeah. don't want a protocol, to... for instance. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yes. But I mean, it might be worth it if there's more features yeah. or more things that can be done. But, yeah, but as Peter said, that we, we, we cannot have, uh, I, I think it's, we don't want to have more features in the, if, if we change that in the user space, and because then people will use, use that. Uh, we will use that instead of, uh, uh, you know, keep the kernel more than of that locked up uh, complaint. So, so they will uh, they may they may change to if if uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that if we're going to make the user space uh, version of locked up more powerful, then it's probably not what we want because we want to, the, to be as same as powerful as kernel version. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, th yeah, those features might not be available to kernel developers who typically use it from their console or things like that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank. You. Any other questions? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>